Thank you, Chris, once again, and thank you to the JM team for, uh, you know, giving us this opportunity to delve deeper into this fascinating topic. Uh, I have with me my co-author, David, uh, and uh, I'll just start off in the whole uh, presentation and uh, look forward to hearing uh, people's questions and inquiries, hopefully giving us more ideas for future research. Uh, the main inspiration of, for us, you know, when we, the reason why we all love this topic was all the different changes, you know, in digital transformation, emergence of new channels, uh, when you think about it, social commerce, for example, and just the changing nature and the fast changing in the dynamic markets, who is a competitor, the boundaries were changing. And if you look through that, like, you know, the journey of the customer had become very convoluted. Earlier, if I wanted to take buy something, I would just go to a shop and pick up. More often than not now, my touch points with companies are different. And this raised a lot of questions, and the word agility kept on coming up in uh, when we were reading about it in the press. So, for example, here's a quote from Theresa McLogan. She's the CMO of TD Bank, you know, and, and this was uh, in, in one of the conversations. She said, our focus as a marketing organization is on creating value, uh, on creating experiences that add value for customers. And what we have learned so far is agile could play a significant role. And we were like, hey, one second, agile is something that people talk about in IT. Um, and we said, oh, well, CarMax, you know, if you wait for the perfect product, you're late. We use an agile development model in product development. So the, the question that we asked us is, is this something that is fundamentally about rethinking marketing organization? And this inspired three key questions for us as a team. First, of course, you know, we have to define what is the concept, right? What is marketing agility? Is it fundamentally different? from different forms of agility. And, you know, as we point out in the paper, there is no shortage of different types of agility, right? From strategic agility, manufacturing agility, IT agility, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But more important for us was what are the challenges? Uh, it sounds like, hey, you know, everyone should do it. So the first question was, is it applicable in every scenario? But then what could be the organizational challenges that companies will face? And what are the factors that are likely to drive or enable marketing agility? Given this framework, we said, you know what, we'll do it in two parts. The approach would be, first, we'll start by talking to some senior executives, not just marketing, but also beyond marketing, who were in companies that have been talking about agility. And, of course, we wanted to delve deeper into published papers without, within marketing and beyond marketing, to ask ourselves, what is this concept of agility? We uh, we were lucky that uh, we were in a in a team which was in two different parts of the world. It made for some interesting scheduling uh, challenges, and uh, you know, as, uh, just share, we always had a Tuesday mornings 8 a.m. marked up. Uh, and you know, when this ended, we were always thinking, hey, the Tuesday mornings will not be the same. We managed to secure uh, 23 managers uh, who were very very experienced. We did, they were across different industries, different functions, uh, both in the U.S. and in Asia. The interviews lasted anywhere from 30 to 90 minutes, and their, ex they, and their experience levels were very, very different. We had someone as young as with only 5.5 years of experience to someone who was a CEO with almost 40 years of experience. So it allowed us a very rich sample, uh, and they were very enthusiastic, and, uh, you know, they followed up with us, shared the paper with them also after the project was done. So what did we find? Uh, the question for us was, what is marketing agility? And, and the definition that we propose is, it is the extent to which an entity rapidly iterates between making sense of the market and executing marketing decisions to adapt to the market. Uh, there are four key elements. I just want to spend a couple of minutes on these. And that were the, we call them the pillars of marketing agility, and hence the figure. Uh, the first was about making sense. You know, I mean, sense making has a huge body of literature, but this, this concept is coming back again and again. Can you make sense of the market developments which might look ambiguous or are too subtle? How do you interpret that as a marketing manager, as, as a senior marketing manager or a marketing manager in the ground? That was uh, that is that became very important, and you know, we uh, one of the inspiration inspiring examples for us was uh, looking at how Uber responded to. Uh, the, the strike by New York taxi drivers. Uh, and uh, because the thing that came to us was that 
it is not always that you know when you're making sense and responding that you will make the right decision because we all remember that uber got really slammed uh, by consumers for saying hey you're taking advantage of an unfortunate situation um of course iteration uh, you have to try things again and again and refine to learn and in some cases also scale up speed was definitely the thing that almost everyone said speed is important because of the fast changing nature of the beast you know markets are changing you know you one day somebody says something on the social media post it goes viral and if you're slow to respond like for example in case of united when united breaks guitars happen uh, you know it can cost you a lot of money and a lot of goodwill you have to be fast last but not the least it is about marketing decisions but there were two nuances which we learned it was not just about advertising or social media it was about product development and beyond that also uh, but for uh, one of the things that a couple of few participants pointed out was decisions does not mean taking an action every time sometimes the best act decision is to wait and watch and not act or maybe start preparing in the background to develop scenarios for acting but acting immediately for everything is not the right thing so that, those are the uh, aspects of marketing agility as as a concept and you know in the paper we go ahead and talk about how it differs uh, from related constructs is it it has overlaps etc etc the next challenge for us as a team was is it always beneficial and you know looking at the literature and synthesizing it with the managerial point of view there were four key factors that became very important in understanding the importance of marketing agility and whether it is feasible in every scenario or not of course unpredictability and uh, that means the more the market is unpredictable the more is your requirement to be very agile um task decomposability was about can you break down your marketing tasks and allocate them with either with your partners who are aligned with you or within the different functions or hierarchies so that when you want to break it when you want to respond fast the team should be like a well oiled machine and ready some tasks are decomposable others are not and the more decomposable your marketing tasks are the better is for you to think about being agile um last but uh, last but not the least is validation from the customer uh, this goes back to iteration you want to do something and you want to get feedback immediately from customers in predominantly b2c scenarios that might be easy but in b2b it might not be that easy and therefore you might want to rethink whether what is your ability to get validation from customers sooner than later the greater that ability the more beneficial marketing agility would be for you so one scenario that came up was that how dependent are you on your partners and and i remember one of the uh, interviewees uh, taking us through the idea that hey if even if png for example wants to change its prices they cannot do that overnight without the help of their channel partners like walmart etc so if you are too highly dependent on your downstream or upstream channel partners agility you might want to be a little cautious if you go through this you know there are a bunch of marketing actions that seem to be very amenable to definitely marketing agility uh, like you know responding to customer complaints new product development media buying but others like you know high, changing your brand meaning that it's a little tricky market entry you have to think carefully maybe a more calibrated approach and similarly with pricing uh, okay uh, i will hand over to david uh, david i will work as your uh, uh, ta so just let me know when do i go to the next slide i appreciate you serving as my ta um this is a very actually this format is not great for agile presentation because one of the things we we discussed is the need to uh, I don't know, you could skip maybe to the next slide. Um, the, one of the things we discussed is the need to get customer feedback. That's one of the elements that helps with agility. And here we, I can't get customer feedback when I'm presenting on whether you are uh, understanding or appreciating the, the topics we're saying. In any case, uh, if you could skip to the next one, I'm gonna actually focus really on the challenges. And so one of the interesting things um, in working on this topic it's agility, organizing for marketing agility was one of the key MSI priorities. And this is what this JM special issue that we wrote the paper for is about. Um, so, and not only was it one of the key priorities, but I learned from MSI, this was actually the number one priority that their members were interested in hearing about. Uh, but there's a bit of a, 
disconnect in terms of academic research because actually no one initially, you know, there were several MSI, I think five MSI priorities, and there was a lot of enthusiasm to work on among the MSI scholars to work on some of these other topics. No one wanted to work on organizing for marketing agility initially. Um, so I think there's a disconnect in terms of, re and I think maybe this topic was considered somewhat ambiguous um, as opposed to some of the other priorities that MSI laid out, but there's a huge enthusiasm for it. But amidst this enthusiasm, I think there's also uh, a need to be cautious about what are the limitations of marketing agility. And so we talked about, we, we spent actually quite a bit of time debating this in our weekly call, as Kapil mentioned, we met uh, every week to kind of hash these things out. Initially, we were, there's a lot of hype around marketing agility. Most of what we read initially was all very, very positive. But as we dug in, we saw and also understood that there's a lot of potential uh, limitations and it's not necessarily appropriate for all types of tasks and all types of organizations. So first of all, um, in case, in terms of brand meaning and really any kind of long-term strategic marketing decision, uh, agility is not useful and can even to some degree be counterproductive because agility is really about short-term focus. You're rapidly iterating, you're trying to gain short-term results. So those short-term results could come at a cost in terms of longer-term planning and brand building it's really about communicating consistent brand identity to consumers. Uh, one, of the, one of the managers that we interviewed talked explicitly about this. He said, you know, brands have to think long-term, sensing and listening, and brands have to take the driver's seat in steering sales and customer management rather than letting external forces dictate what they do. Whereas agility, a lot of it's really about responding to customer feedback, whether explicit or in terms of their behavior, and, and acting according to that feedback and trying to get, get these short-term gains. And so that can actually be risky in terms of a brand identity and it could lead to, again, with this rapid experimentation, running lots of experiments, doing different things, uh, it's not going to communicate a consistent identity to the consumer. And so that could create relatively fuzzy brand associations as a byproduct of all that frequent experimentation. Um, Bill, if you can switch to the next yeah, so the, Another thing we talked about also along the same lines with this kind of short-term rapid iteration, rapid movement, there is likely going to be a need for ethical guardrails because, again, we see this all the time now with the uh, concerns over consumer data, consumer privacy, and if that data is not handled appropriately, is maybe exploited or consumers feel that it's exploited, then that's a, a cause for concern. And we think, again, that there's a concern with agility, that there's a real focus on getting quick results and moving fast and breaking things, as uh, Mark Zuckerberg at one point said at Facebook, and that can lead to uh, maybe a, a disregard for ethics. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, another issue we, we considered is, from an organization standpoint, how can you hire marketing leaders and even also employees to work in an agile environment? It requires uh, a different set of skills and a combination of skills that's relatively rare. Uh, we know from many sources that firms do struggle to hire marketing leaders now that have both the technology chops that are essential in an agile environment, uh, the knowledge of data, the knowledge of digital tools, and as well as the really experience with marketing strategy. And that mix of skills is still relatively rare, although obviously it's growing. Uh, but you see people who are purely from the tech side being hired into marketing positions now who might not have actually the marketing knowledge and marketing experience that is essential for marketing leaders. Beyond that, we also talked about the type of personality of someone who is likely to function optimally in an agile marketing environment. And one of the things that we, we think is very interesting is in almost all organizations, there's a, a, quite a significant literature in, in the management literature about this, is what kind of personality uh, does well in an organization. And one of the personality traits, if you consider the big five personality traits, which is commonly used in personality research, conscientiousness is the biggest predictor of success in an organization. And managers want to hire conscientious people, right? Conscientious people are responsible, they're task-oriented, they're planners. And so these people tend to do very, very well in most organizations, and they tend to be hired and they tend to be promoted. But if you look at the literature, conscientious, it's very, very tightly predictive of success in almost any dimensions. Conscientious people, they're healthier, they live longer, they are more educated, they're successful in their career, and so on. But the one area, really almost exclusively, that they don't do well in is things like multitasking, is acting quickly, because they are planners. They're people who are very kind of, they don't like to leave uncer any uncertainty. 
um, when they make decisions. And so they really are focused on planning. So they actually underperform in tasks that require kind of switching between between tasks. And this is really what agility is about. It's kind of rapidly iterating. And so the type of people that function really well in most organizations, they might have actually uh, a hard time adapting to an agile marketing organization. Uh, next slide, please. All right, this is one of the one of the other ones we talked about, and this is a Kapil actually already referred to this a bit. Our powerful partners and customers roadblocks. Again, if you are an agile marketing organization, your external partners might not be able to match your clock speed. Right? They might not be able to match these short iterative cycles, um, whether it's a supplier, um, and also in terms of part in partners with like contracting issues. Can these contracts be adapted on the fly when you learn something new during your iteration? Um, it can be challenging. Uh, next slide, please. And the last one we talked about as a significant concern is, you know, th there's a lot of hype around agility, but also a lot of people who work in agile environments, I'm thinking particularly about software environments, they are very negative about it. And a lot of that stems from the fact that many managers and many organizations, they don't actually uh, adopt the agile uh, kind of the agile core aspects per se, is they focus more on these kind of trappings of agility. There's all these buzz terms, right? Like you have um, uh, stand-up meetings where you stand up, physically stand up at the end of the day as part of the meeting. So all these kind of trappings of agility, or you have what's called scrums and squads and tribes and so on. And so they have these kind of naming conventions and they have these tribes, but they don't actually uh, follow the real essence of agility in terms of rapidly iterating and so on, but they really are focused more on the trappings of agility. They kind of try to copy some organizations that have been successful with agility, like a CarMax or like a Spotify, and they try to mimic that with these kind of superficial ways. And we refer to it even in our paper as a bit like cargo cult science, right? There was this phenomenon where uh, some remote tribes, when they saw, you know, advanced civilizations in terms of bringing planes, delivering cargo, they kind of just built runways and assumed that cargo would just land there. And so it's kind of the same type of thing in some cases where you have organizations that are superficially mimicking the trappings of agility without really uh, capturing its essence. And so we think that that's, that happens. Uh, we see kind of evidence of that in the domain of software engineering, and we think that's a concern for marketing organizations as well. So that's kind of uh, the main challenges we saw, and I'll now turn it over to uh, Rajesh and Nick. Uh, 